They're anything but is the thing. Look at, okay, holy cow, $64 billion, that's up there. They make integrated circuits and they mine diamonds, petroleum, packed medications. Is, is medicaments the same as medications? $2 billion of petroleum, tropical fruits, diamonds though. Diamonds. Nine billion dollars in diamonds, planes, medical instruments. You're gonna think maybe I've lost my mind. Okay. Um, doesn't. It's, I, I was gonna say this is TSMC. You know, Taiwan semiconductors. Apparently not. I don't know if they got diamond mines in Taiwan. I'm just. I'm. I'm spinning my wheels a little bit here because it's. It's got to be a tropical country. I'm assuming, that is, has a very developed economy and also diamonds. Kind of crazy, right? I mean, $64 billion, it's, that's pretty high. Could this be something? <laughs> I'm, in, in my head, I'm like, where are the tropics? Could this be like, uh, I'm, could this be like Brazil? At least we'll get a directional arrow. Oh, it's not even close, man. 10,000 kilometers northeast of Brazil. <clears throat> 10,000 kilometers from Brazil. They sell tropical fruits. I'm going to assume it's more east than north then. This could be something in the, in the <laughs> Indian Ocean. Could just bear with me here. I'm going to say India. It might not be north of Brazil. I guess it depends on your perspective. Okay. It's 5,000 kilometers northwest of India. Maybe this, maybe I shouldn't be focusing on this. Maybe they import tropical fruits and then they export them. Maybe they're like, maybe they just take them in and hold them for a second, take their pound of flesh and then send them elsewhere. Maybe it's just a major shipping location. Um, it's 5,000 kilometers northwest of India. Puts you maybe, um, maybe like, uh, uh, like Turkey. Much closer. It's south of Turkey. It's Egypt. Oh, <laughs> it's northeast of Egypt. 614 kilometers. It's Israel. Do they, they don't mind diamonds in Israel, dude. Do they? Petroleum. I'm, I'm going to say Jordan instead. I'm going to go adjacent to Israel. Oh, it's north west of Jordan. That's, it, it's got, it, if it's not Israel, it's like Cyprus then. Or like Lebanon. But I'm going to say Israel, and if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. I'm right, I think. The button turned yellow. Holy cow. All right, that was scary. Well done. That was a really tough guess. I had no idea that Israel exported diamonds. Globla is also very hard today. All right. Well, you know what? We're, we're warmed up. I think our major goal in the dulls should be to have like one perfect day. I'm sure it'll take a long time to get there, but can you imagine? Can you imagine having a perfect... Well, I guess a, a perfect in time guesser or chrono guesser, we would just have like a, a score threshold, but... Israel. It's not Israel. It's not your dad. I knew your dad. It's 9,000 kilometers away from Israel. Give me something in here. Give me a Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan. It's even further from Kyrgyzstan. That's terrible news. Give me a... Um, give me an Angola. 
it's um <laughs> um uh it's in south america it's suriname suriname is much closer it's 1300 kilometers away it's um curacao did you mean Croatia? No, I fucking did not mean Croatia, for the record. It's the, the Seychelles are in India. It's um, uh, 1,300 kilometers away. It's Ecuador. Ecuador is colder. Don't be a fool. It's something up here, son of a bitch. Dominica. That's much warmer. It's um, St. Kitts and Nevis. That's even warmer. It's um, Antigua and Barbuda. Oh! <laughs> oh, I was starting to run out. I was starting to run out. I do not know the Caribbean very well at all. Give me... Oh, dude, I love box office game. January 23rd, 2009. This is the most impossible game of the... Well, actually, Game the Game is probably... Or not Game the Game, but Game... Uh, game they'll guess the game is the hardest of all. Okay, January 2009. Oftentimes, this is a horror movie uh, period. Now, I see a movie... This is a... Uh, this is probably Oscar bait. Fox Searchlight. It's been in theaters for three months. And is is rising in terms. It's adding more theaters. It was just nominated for like best picture or something. It stars Dev Patel. This is Slumdog Millionaire. Boom. Eat my shorts. Sony Picture. Let's let, week number one. It opened to twenty million dollars. For January, it's respectable. Let me get a genre. It's a fantasy action thriller from Sony. Let me get actor number one, Rona Mitra. Fuck. Um, let me get actor number two, Bill Nye. Oh, okay, he's the old guy. I know, he's Sean's dad from uh, Shaun of the Dead. Also, Michael Sheen. Is this, um, is this an underworld movie then? Is this underworld... Holy fuck, there's a lot of them. Rise of the Lycans, maybe? <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, every war has a beginning. What an audacious tagline for, like, the seventh movie in the franchise. Okay. The fact that we got any points on that is, is crazy. Now, this is in its second week. First week maybe opened around 40 mil. It's pretty good. It's probably an action movie. Yeah. Action adventure comedy family starring Kevin James. 2009. I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. 2009. It could, I mean, it could be Paul Blart. It could be like Grown Ups. I don't know. The, okay, it's Paul Blart. I don't know the exact timeline of, of all the Kevin James movies. I guess I should have known from top billing. He would be, Adam Sandler would probably be top billing. Fair enough. Okay, this is a Warner Brothers movie that is going to cross 100 million. It's a drama. Probably another, it's been in theaters for uh, a full year. It's probably more Oscar bait, which is fine. Stars Clint Eastwood. This is um, um, uh, Gran Torino. Not really Oscar bait, but... Holy cow, we're doing great today. We, we just got one more. It's a Paramount movie. It's a family comedy that's not animated. It's... It's not doing so well at the box office. Stars Emma Roberts. Um, and Jake Austin. That's not going to help me. Let me get a tagline. No stray gets turned away. I don't know the dog movies. Actor three is Don Cheadle. Reveal all hints, please. Placed in a foster home that doesn't allow pets, 16-year-old Andy and her younger brother Bruce turn into bandit is, is Hotel for Dogs. I know nothing about this except I think that they had a Nintendo DS game about Hotel for Dogs. <clears throat> Imagine the smell. 
They have to do some quick thinking to keep the cops off their tails. I don't get it. What it like? Aren't they just running a business? Aren't there really like hotels for dogs? It's illegal. I, you know, I think there should be regulations about running like a pet hotel. I don't want a 16 year old kenneling my dogs just because they decided they like dogs. Like I want to, I want someone who's got some experience, man. They're strays. Well, they could still get rabies or something like that. It's just, I don't know. It seems like they should at least go through the proper permitting process. But I haven't seen the movie. Maybe they, maybe they handle that. It's in an abandoned building. That doesn't make it any better. If anything, it's even worse. They might uh, use, uh, get hepatitis from a piece of like, uh, like a rusty nail or something like that. I see polar bear, compass, gold. This takes us to the golden compass. I see the lives of others starring Nicole Kidman. Anime inspired Ghost in the Shell. Okay, that's Scarlett Johansson. Um, Airbnb horror basement. I'm not going to tell you what that is. German, oh, the lives, I'm just thinking, Nicole Kidman is in a movie called The Others about ghosts. We're going to get all five today. This is The Lives of Others, which is about spying. Justin Long apparently is in Barbarian. And then horror, oh, Nicole Kidman, Others, horror. That's The Others. This is the easiest cine to nerdle of all time. Golden Compass, The Lives of Others, Ghost in the Shell 2017, and Barbarian. I even got the year of the Ghost in the Shell remake right. I want to smoke the shit they gave Batu before he went glasses shopping. Okay, now take me to the reverse. Zaza! <laughs> oh, man. Give me a minute here. Burn After Reading, Fargo, Buster Scruggs, Coen Brothers movies with The Big Lebowski. Mulholland Drive, Sunset Boulevard, these are all roads. Year One, The Flintstones, 10,000 BC and Ice Age, these are all prehistoric movies. These are all Pixar movies. Okay, now this is where things get interesting. Movies with John Goodman. Movies with John Goodman, dude, it's the easiest puzzle of all time. Did you see the tweet that was like, um, it was a picture of John Goodman and it said like, without naming X movie, what's your favorite movie this guy's ever been in? And the movie was like, can somebody tell? It was like a children's animated sequel or something like that. It was so good. Without naming the worst movie that John Goodman's ever been in. What's your favorite John Goodman movie? Now, okay, sorry, it wasn't that bad. It was Kong Skull Island. You're right. Without naming Kong Skull Island, what's your favorite John Goodman movie? I'm like, wow, oh, geez, I was going to say Kong Skull Island. But now that you've thrown that, I just, ah, uh, geez, I've got to go with the Flintstones, I guess. He hasn't been in that much else, right? Big Lebowski sucks. No, not, not wrong. Barton Fink, great movie. He's real sweaty in that one, that's for sure. Okay, movie to movie. Bro, I can't, so they, they, listen, movie to movie, I admire the theming weeks, okay? But we're just going from Johnny Depp to Antonio Banderas again. And I'm, you've bent me over in a couple of these. So, I, like, I'm just going to take the win. We go Johnny Depp, Once Upon a Time in Mexico, Antonio Banderas, Desperado. Like, that's... <laughs> We just take those, we take those all day, every day. Plus we get to see Johnny Puff, Secret Agent, or whatever the heck that movie is called. It's just Johnny Depp, Antonio Banderas week. Guess the game. Hmm. Hmm, interesting. This one looks like a, a PlayStation 1 game. My dad would walk in and see me playing this and be like, whoa, is this a movie? 
It looks photorealistic. I don't have an immediate good guess for you, though. I'm going to say this is medieval. It's not medieval. It's too old for Metacritic. This is mist. PC and Nintendo 64. This is Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. Excuse me? Oh, it's, Star it's pod racing. Star Wars episode one racer. Okay, good. I played a lot of this. I didn't know it was on PC. This is a good game. There's three kinds of people in the world. People who play Sebulba because he's got flame jets. People who play Anakin because he's the main character. And real ones who play either Mars Guo because he has the fastest top speed or Team Topagalese because he has the best acceleration. Gamedal. My nemesis, Gamedal. Also gives me the best ads. Yeah, I have no idea. I have no clue. Uh, this is Far Cry 4. Thanks for your help. Skip me. It's just, it's not a productive guess. Is Hogwarts Legacy? Okay. Luckily that, if, if this game showed up in three years, I would not um, remember that this game existed, I think. So it's good that it showed up in 2023 when it's still recently top of mind, at least. So I didn't realize it was made by Portkey Games. That's like Precious based on the novel Push by Sapphire. It's like, what, the Portkey Games? What, you put your name up there. You're not Martin Scorsese. Nobody knows who you are. Portkey Games presents Hogwarts Legacy. I'm just saying, act like, it, act like you've been there before. Like, if it's Bethesda or something like that, if it's... Uh, I, I'm too lazy to think of any other game developers, honestly. How many times are we going to go around this, this big blue marble? Okay, now... Fun game. I don't understand the hate. That's funny. I do. Um, this is like a this is like a doom. Eternal. Okay, I'm crazy. I'm kind of insane at gaming. I just saw like a cybernetic robot skull guy, and I thought that that must be a doom. But I said I was not going to guess doom because then they're going to be like it didn't come out in 1996, and I would be like I know that idiot. Okay, now, The Impossible Game, though. Hang on, we're waiting to see what the ad is. Slim Jim Monster Smoked Meat Sticks. It's got a four and a half with 8,000 reviews. That's pretty good. Plus, you can save uh, $2 if you get it on subscribe and save. Sorry, I'm a Jack Lynx man. Um, Dark Souls 2. It's a third-person game that came out more recently than 2014. It's Outriders. They don't even have it in the, in the thing. Um, it's Destiny 2. It's not Destiny 2. It was not made in the Tiger engine. Could be an EA game. Could be... It's third person. It's third person. It's a third person game. It's not in the Destiny or the Dark Souls saga. It's The Legend of Zelda, the last one, Breath of the Wild. That probably came out also in 2017, now that I think about it. Okay, but we learned something. Now we know it is a single player game in the third person, which really narrows it down. And there's no first-person option. What is PUBG before they ruined it? Um, what is... Uh, it's not going to be a Nintendo game. That's the hard part. So it could be a third-person RPG. 
be a third person adventure role playing game. Adventure role playing game. Third person adventure role playing game. Not made in the Havoc physics engine. And it's not in the Zelda saga. In case you thought it was in the Zelda saga. Brother, I got no idea. I've got nothing. I have no clue. Can't, not a single game is, is popping into my head right now. A single player third person game? What, are you crazy? Could it be, um, uh, wait, 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 I, one popped into my head. What's the Dark Souls that is like um, in a shitty future? You know, like what if District 9 was Dark Souls? And then I'm going to look over to this. It's called The... The Surge, thank you. This, oh, fuck. <laughs> okay, Maybe, is it a Dark Souls-like, possibly? It could be. Neo, the second. Now we got a theme to think about. It's earlier, it's, it's more recent than 2020. Oh, man. Um, that's a problem. I, I have no idea. Straight up, I have no idea. Let, give me to my hint, please. It's Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Here's my one-time clue. It's from Ember Lab. That seems like something I should be able to, to glean. Because that's like, uh, it's probably an indie game company. But I don't know it. And now I'm, I'm in full yeet mode. It's probably a short hike. Is there just a game with Ember in the... There's Remember Me. That's from Coco. I'm going to say it's probably like Guitar Hero 3 Legends of Rock. I'm going to say it's um, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. And I'm gonna, finally, I'm going to say it's Brave Fencer Musashi. It's, I would not have gotten it, but I do remember this. I, I heard this game was very good. And it was, it was kind of a Souls clone. I was on the right track. It was a very uh, good-looking game. I remember Kate played it. Look at the genre. It's an indie adventure. It's a Souls game, dude. If you watch it, you'll be like, it's a Souls game. Game goes always like that. That's the skill check. It's a 1991 mystery thriller with two words. Who farted? Um, I pass. I don't have an immediate answer. Every shot reminds you that a consummate artist is having a great time remaking a kinky minor classic. Fatal Attraction. The Wrath of De Niro especially when pitched to the level of a jangle brain Jehovah is a mighty thing. But in this case, its inherent cartoonery capsizes the film's small story frame. Are you speaking English, you dumb motherfucker? <laughs> what does this mean? <laughs> Next clue. It gives you a pumped-up thrill-happy ride, but it doesn't linger in the mind as Scorsese's richest movies do. It's Scorsese De Niro? Next clue. Smart and stylish, Blank is a gleefully modern, gleefully mainstream shocker from Martin Scorsese with a terrifying Robert De Niro performance. It's Cape Fear. I didn't. I, I don't know Cape Fear. Should I see Cape Fear? It's a great movie. It insists upon itself. It's an even better book. I don't have time for the books anymore. I don't even have time for the TV shows. I've only got time for the movies. My dumb ass used to think movies were the long ones and TV shows were the short ones. No, no, no. The TV shows are the long ones. A movie tells a story in 90 minutes to three hours and then it's, you know, take a couple of years off. TV show is like once a year, here's 10 more hours of like mid-content with a cliffhanger at the end of every episode. I'm over it. 
Okay, we're back to Chrono Photo. This is like ancient, dude. This is a drawing. You don't see these around too much anymore. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I've ever seen one of these in my... I don't even know what the hell this thing is. I'm assuming that this pushes... Uh, this is where the ex uh, hot air comes out. This is where the exhaust comes out. I don't know if this is like an old school sewing machine or something. This is just a doodad. It is the, the early... Like the, the Wild West and I guess the early 20th century. We had a lot of doodads doohickeys and so forth right like they were making cars but they were putting like all the belts and the gaskets and shit on the outside because you had to sit in this little coffin here oh man i mean i gotta i why would i not go 1900 like it's sure we're wrong but like it's the oldest photo i've ever seen they're actually wearing like almost exactly the same drip as me today this is kind of crazy um now, here's the ultimate question. What sport are they playing? I guess I'm going to assume that this is soccer. Volleyball? I don't think it's volleyball, man. I think that's an old school soccer ball. Like, I think, you know, this is not the volleyball outfit. This guy's not showing up for the volleyball championship. Look at Josh Brolin is not putting on... A pinstripe suit. Go watch a bunch of grown men play volleyball. <laughs> this football? Yeah, soccer. Look at the shoes, man. This, I mean, the socks, it could, it could be anything. I have no idea. I have no clue whatsoever. I'm going to say this is 1930 even. We take those. The Temperance Hotel. Could this be... That's, that's Charlie Chaplin right there. Could this be during Prohibition? I don't have an answer for you. I'm just going to say it's the mid-1920s. It's 1902. Son of a bitch. It's <laughs> so the First World War. Let's call this... Uh, I don't mean to say this in like a positive way. But the men are looking like kind of fresh. It's like the, the, they seem relatively like not beaten down yet. So maybe this is like 1915. It's actually 1914. People are going to say, why would you? Oh, like the war was all peaches and cream early. I'm just saying like they, you see photos from the end of the war. It's a very good point. They weren't wearing the hats at the end of the war. They were wearing the old artillery shells cut in half. I have no idea, man. I mean, it's like Mexico 1912. Okay, it's just pure luck. <laughs> it's just complete luck. This is a really old one today. 3347. Not a great score, but like all things considered, we'll take that. Housel. Presented by Carrie. <laughs> I love I love Housel. It's so bougie. Presented by Carrie Ann Sullivan and Tammy Pardee with Pardee Properties. Now, um, I haven't even seen the outside of the house, which is not really. It's hard for me to tell how big this is, but I hate this. By the way, like I. I, we, we've been to a lot of open houses over the past two months. I hate a living room that doesn't have a TV in it. And then, like, the TV is in, like, the basement. They're like, oh, this is, like, a lounge. That just does... It's, it looks nice, but at the same time, I'm like, that's not realistic. People watch TV in the living room. I get that this is, like, professionally staged or something like that. So instead of... Oh, these guys don't watch TV. Instead, they have a painting they look at. That's oh, And they don't have a couch. They've got like two armchairs that are 25 feet apart from each other. It's not realistic, okay? It, 
So I appreciate that this looks ugly, but it's productive. It's, it's practical, I guess is what I mean. They have a television in their living room because that's where you watch the, the TV and the movies. I hate, though, that they've cut out part of the wall to, to have like a, 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 an inset to put the TV. That's a little tacky to me. It just goes to show you that I, you can't please me. Anyway, um, I have no idea. Honestly, this doesn't look that impressive to me. Unless this is, like, I, I don't mean to be judgmental. Like, it's bigger than my house, I'm sure. But, like, little kitchen island, two bar stools, relatively small kitchen. I mean, this looks, like, modern, but it doesn't seem like a big place. I'm going a little low. I don't know where it is, though. You know, that I think about it, the fact that it's presented by party properties and not just, like, dude who owns the house has got me thinking that this is probably in a high cost of living area. So just start me at, like, 1.25, and then we'll glean more information. That's too low. Okay. It's in Venice, California. Astro turf rooftop patio. How many... How many fireplaces do you need? It's another thing that I've been seeing when we go to these open houses. The living room has like a, a, a gas-enabled fireplace. There's a rooftop with a fireplace like this. People are like, there's a natural gas line. You could put your fire table there. Are you trying to die? I don't even want a fireplace, honestly. I, I'm, I'm not necessarily against it, but it's certainly not like a deal breaker for me. If I had one, I think I would probably never use it, if I had to guess. But I don't know. I'm going to take it up to two and a half. I mean, we're doing binary search because we still haven't even seen the front door. Okay, that's too high. I have already saw this picture. It's 2,000 square feet. So it is bigger than my place. <laughs> but I'm not impressed. That's all I'm saying. It's not, it's not hideous. It's just I'm not that impressed. I'm, ass I'm assuming Venice is just outside of Los Angeles. Real estate's probably messed up like it is in Vancouver. You know, give me like, give me like a thousand dollars a square foot, and then take me to to two milli. That's too low. We're we're gonna get it right today. I'll tell you that much. Three bed, three bath. How about a two point two five? It's just that easy. It's not, a, it's not an ugly house. It's just like it wasn't like a sprawling mansion like the ones that we've seen in Arkansas. Time guesser, time guesser. This would be, I mean, I, I could tell you without a doubt, this is Susan B. Anthony right here. Mr. President, how long must women wait for liberty? This is Washington, District of Columbia. I'm pleading ignorance and, and begging you for mercy. I don't know the year in the United States when women got the right to vote. I also don't know the year that it happened in Canada. So I'm like really falling on the sword here. But I believe it was sometime in the 1920s. I'm going to say it was 1926. Okay, I mean, we were pretty close on the location. It was 1920. Okay, I mean, I'm, I'll, I'll take that one. I'm not upset by it. It was 1920. Oh, there you go. This is uh, Piccadilly Circus in London. I have to imagine. Jacques, the super film. Before the double decker bus existed. I mean, it's another one where location is like a gimme. We could probably get it down to like less than half a kilometer away if I could just figure out where the hell Piccadilly Circus is. It's, you know, it's somewhere around here. There it is. Piccadilly Circus. I, if I've seen it once, I've seen it a million times. The Times Square of England. It's got some great stuff there. The Hard Rock Cafe, Pizza Hut, Tesco Express. 
Coach. Waxy O'Connors. Okay, Piccadilly Circus. I got to imagine... I don't know. It looks like a traffic nightmare. You know, this is before they even put lines on the road. You know there were probably people that were like, why would you even bother putting lines on the road? You drive on the right, I'll drive on... Or you drive on the... See, now you got the confusion! This looks like... Also like 1920s to me. I'm going to go 26 and I'm going to run back the year from last time. It was 1919. I was seven years off again. I was 13 meters away from the location, though. We'll take that. This is... This is a tough one. Because unless I'm mistaken, I could be mistaken, but this looks like the signage is in Hebrew. But that doesn't really, like, narrow it down. Like, this isn't GeoGuessr. If you see the Hebrew language in GeoGuessr, you're like, I'm in Israel. This, to me, looks like library. <laughs> See, this is throwing me for a loop, because in French, library is bibliothèque. This is just library spelled strangely. These don't look like American license plates. Huh? <laughs> Maybe it is France? It's really hard to tell from that. I have no idea. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That says Rue. Okay, so I, I'm thinking this is Paris. Even though maybe they use library like instead of bibliotheque informally or something like that. I don't know. And um, it's old. Put, put me back. Put me in 1930 even. It's 1919. <laughs> Is that the theme to the... No matter what, on the next one, I'm guessing 1919, okay? Libraries are actually bookstores. Bibliotheques are libraries. Make it make sense, okay? I thought that a bookstore was called La Livre de Hiver. That's not 1919. Look at those cars. You think it's possible it is broken today? Holy cow. To me, <laughs> I mean, this is, this is a big ship. This is not 1919. That's a given. These houses, I wanted to say that this is like San Francisco. Um, it is, you know, it's on the port, but the houses look more like British to me and Tyne just strikes me as like a British, this looks more like a British ship, I guess, now that I think about it. Isn't the Tyne like a river or something? All these cities are called like, you know, Salisbury upon Tyne. I'm going to say this is Portsmouth. I'm, I have to be honest with myself. I don't think this is 1919. So if, if it is, I think that it's broken. Put me, this is like 1955. It's 1975, and it's in the north of England. Okay, at least we know the game's not broken. It's a big ship. This is the filming of Dunkirk. And... Um, Christopher Nolan is uh, notoriously meticulous, so I'm going to assume that this was actually on the beaches of Dunkirk um, and that it was probably circa... The movie came out maybe like 2018. I'm going to say it was filmed 2017. It's 2016, and it was indeed filmed in Dunkirk. Final score, 37,000. Could have been worse. Could have been worse. Could have been better. Could have been worse. It's a tough time guesser today. Listed. I know I make this joke on listed uh, quite frequently. This is the kind of house where, like, as a kid, you would watch it. Or, you'd sorry, as a kid, you would see it in a movie. And it would be like, my dad's in between jobs right now. This is our humble family abode. And you'd be like, yeah, that checks out. And now as an adult, you're like, what the fuck? 
You got a stay-at-home mom. Your dad is uh, got laid off, and you live in a four thousand square foot mansion in the Northeast. How did that happen? Like Home Alone. You're, yeah, I mean, I, it's stolen from Twitter, but the the joke of like, I want to know what Kevin McAllister's dad did to live in a five thousand square foot mansion and take his entire family on a trip to Paris for Christmas. He lived in the 90s. So true. So true. The Simpsons house is supposed to be kind of a shithole, but now it's worth $3 million. I mean, I'm just, I'm picturing the Simpsons house in my, in my head right now. It's got a garage. It's got a, it's got a little yard. It has a beautiful living room with a bay window. <laughs> it's got a television. It's got a kitchen. It's got a basement. With the laundry in it, it's got an attic. It's got at least th three bedrooms. I don't know where Maggie sleeps, but it's got at least three bedrooms. I think I've only ever seen one bathroom, though. Okay. Anyway, treehouse. Okay, Tomo, you wanna you wanna leave? This is, this doesn't concern you, Tomo. It's okay. You don't need to worry about the property. It's got a mud room. Anyway, sorry. I, did, I mean, to me, this looks, this looks like an expensive house. I would just start the bidding at six fifty. It's in Glen Ellen, Illinois. Is this one of those places where I've never heard of it? And then I guess too low, and people are like, "Oh, this is where the r really rich people in Chicago live." Like rich people live in a glass penthouse downtown, but like the the generationally rich people live in Glen Ellen. Take me up to, take, uh, Chicago's got crazy real estate. Take me up to 1.25. It's lower than that. I'm not going under 1.1 for now. You drive a hard bargain. Four beds, three baths. Okay, I'm going down to one. It's built in 1948. You wouldn't know it. It looks, it looks beautiful. I'm going down to nine. Ah, 2,500 square feet. 850. Lot size, 8,000 square feet. <laughs> I'm to show up. 10,000 square foot lot? You playing cricket out there? Holy cow. Uh, say 875,000. Damn, dude, that seems, it seems like a steal. Don't get me wrong, it's expensive, but this, this beautiful house, 2,500 square feet, four beds, three baths, enormous lot. That's a tiny lot. What are you talking? It's 10,000 square feet. What do you mean it's a tiny lot? As average, your answer's in for a reckoning. It's not an average lot size. Holy cow. Our lot is 11,000 square feet. It doesn't feel big. Travel to a city. And then tell me how, it's the thing that drives me crazy is the people who live outside of the city always say things like, I don't understand how those people can live there uh, in those tiny little shoe boxes. And I'm like, brother, look at a, a graph of like population density. You guys with your sprawling estates are the fucking weird ones. The people in the city are the normal ones. Or at least we're the, the average, I should say. They delude themselves into thinking that they're representative of the norm when the norm is actually, you know, living in 900 square feet. Don't try to delude me in the chat that the 8,500 square feet lot is small. Same thing, 2,500 square feet. That's like a, that's a pretty big house, man. I mean, that's like... You know, in the 1950s, the average starter home was 1,200 square feet? Average. That means like, you know, half of them were, were smaller than that. Half of them were larger, but half of them were smaller. People were growing up. They got four kids. They got one bathroom. They made it work. Now we're out here saying you didn't know how good you had it. Really? I had to hold in my... I wasn't alive back then, but granddad had to hold in a shit for like 
three hours while his four daughters all took showers one after each other. No wonder he drank himself to death. Anyway, we got travel still. You're losing me? I kind of lost myself there in, in the middle of it. Today I'd like to go to Germany from Norway. Dude, they heard my complaints. It's, it's perfect. Uh, me personally, I would probably go through Denmark. And then I would say like right after that, I would be like, Sweden? He's insane. <laughs> Holy cow. He's out of control. We made it. He's right outside my window. Talia, are you a Dua Lipa fan? I was listening to uh, my, uh, my middle Peloton ride today. Was It opened with Dua Lipa's Cool. And I was like, shit, this is a talented artist. I'm not that into the, the modern pop music that much. But the, the Dua Lipa stuff, I was kind of into it. Dua, they, they played two Dua Lipa songs. One of them was cool. The other one was um, um, Don't Start Now. But I already knew that from the six months that I spent on TikTok. If you don't want to see me dancing with nobody, 